Hello everybody, my name is Jade and in this video I'm going to show you a portrayal of a queer person in history. For a while now I've been wanting to make a series about queer people in history. And what a better time to start this series off than during Pride Month! Last year during Pride Month I made a video about the Stonewall Riots. You can see that video right over there. This portrayal is the story of Chevalier Deon, French noble, spy, diplomat, soldier. It's a title right out of a movie, right? And I think they will make a fascinating movie. When you Google them, the first thing that comes up is that they are a cross dressing spy. That's it. And I think there is more to this story that deserves a spotlight. During this portrayal, I will refer to them with they them pronouns. Why, you might ask? Because it becomes clear that they were somewhere on the gender spectrum. Uh, but they can't speak out for themselves which pronouns they would prefer. So I'm going for the safe choice and I'm using they them pronouns. It's 1728, you're in the French countryside, there are sunflowers everywhere around you. You stand on a cobblestone road and in front of you you hear the sound of a cart creaking, being pulled by a draft horse into the French town of Tonnerre. You enter the town and you hear the crying of a baby coming from out a window. Little do you know that that is where Chevalier Deon just has been born. In the small town of Tonnerre, uh, Chevalier Deon was excelled in school. Uh, because they excelled in school, they quickly went to university in Paris. Once in Paris to study law, they studied civil and canon law there. In 1749, they graduated and they started having some clerical jobs around the town. During this time, they were known as a social and financial reformer. Then, in 1756, that is where the real good story starts. In 1756, Chevalier Deon was recruited into a secret spy ring called the Secret Droit, the King's Secret. This was a spy ring from Louis XV. He used this uh, to recruit diplomats, people who, nobles, people who had some power to spy on enemy courts. That is also what happened and what was Chevalier Deon's first posting. Chevalier Deon went to Russia to spy on the court in Russia and to act like a diplomat and a noble. Then the Seven Year Wars broke out between England and France and they were recalled and they fought on the battlefield as part of a dragoon unit. Dragoons are mounted horsemen with guns. Mounted horsemen with guns. Imagine that. Eventually Chevalier Deon was recalled to Paris to go to London to broker a peace treaty between England and France. In the public in London, they were at the center of diplomatic relations. They were the person you looked to. They were the connection. They were it. In secret, however, they all worked still for Le Secret du Roi. And they were gathering information to send to King Louis XV about the possibility of invading F England at some point. Gathering weak points, notes on supplies, notes on supply routes. They all saw a good money-making opportunity there. He started blackmailing King Louis XV to not spill the secrets about the French invasion that was being planned for England. They all was safe there. He was abroad. He couldn't get arrested by the king's men, so this was a safe opportunity for them. Then there was a political scandal between one of the king's mistresses and an ambassador. And the ambassador had to go to England to be posted somewhere else and not be near the mistress anymore. Deon was recalled. They had to return to France. Of course, Deon refused and they stayed in England in exile, still using the information they had about the invasion to blackmail King Louis XV into giving them a royal stipend, enough money to live a comfortable life in the high societies of London. During their time in London, they started functioning as a whistleblower of sorts, revealing secrets to the English public about France. They all became popular, was part of the high society, everybody knew their name, and it was even to the level that people had a betting pool going on what is in their pants. It shows us that cis people's fascination with trans people's genitalia is from all times. Deon's response to this was epic. They said, you can ask me, but when you do, I challenge you to a duel. A duel. They threatened to shot the person who would ask. Can you imagine that? When King Louis XV died in 1774, they started a negotiation with Louis XVI. They were very original with naming at the time, I know! The negotiations were about returning to France, because as much of a good life as that Dion had, 
in London, they wanted to return to France, their home country. A deal was struck and the young could return back to France on one condition that they readopt women's clothing. Now, I hear you think there. Readopt? Readopt women's clothing? Yes, readopt women's clothing. It's a weird phrasing that suggests that they already were wearing women's clothing in the past. The sources are unclear whether or not this was a forced move by King Louis to bar Deon from having any political power and doing what they did to Louis XV to Louis XVI, or that it was a choice of their own because they wanted to be seen and treated as a woman. To me, the usage of the word readopt suggests the latter. To, to further this idea, when they left for London in 1749 to avoid the French Revolution, you could call there, you don't want to get guillotined as a noble, Dion spent their whole life in London in women's clothing and wanted to be addressed as a woman. To me, this suggests two things. One, they were a woman from birth and they spent their early lives as a man. Or, more plausible for me, they were assigned male at birth and they just wanted to spend the rest of their life as a woman because they felt more comfortable that way. The story of Deon is one of many queer stories in history. It is important that we tell and document these stories to show people being queer isn't something new, it's something that has been here always and will always be here. We need these stories to add nuance and depth to the standard white cis heteronormative telling of history. We need stories from people of color, we need stories from people with different sexualities, we need stories from people with different gender identities, we need stories from people with different cultures. We need stories that weren't written by and for white cis heteronormative men to add nuance to history and to show that the human diversity is way broader as that it is defined in the history books most of the times. We need these stories to write history for everyone, not just for the men who wrote history in the past. Okay everybody, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this historical portrayal of Chevalier Deon. I had a ton of fun researching this episode and I would like it if you left a comment, did a like, subscribed and I hope to see all of you back for more. Have an amazing pride and I'll see you all later. Bye bye!